not what you think because no wait like always i have to give a little disclaimer if you hear any back noise in the background it's my husband praying <laughs> I always have to tell you something about my husband is making noise in the background. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry because, I mean, it's fun to live with this guy. <laughs> like the face card not declining, ticking as a good thing. And you need deliverance. Yeah. Thou shall not have BBLs. Like, you know. <laughs> Christian women's church girl meeting because we need to sit down and talk about a few things guys because it's getting out of control <laughs> everyone and welcome back to the fabulous life of a church girl i am so excited for this video it is long overdue that we talk about this we are gonna have a women's meeting a women's christian women's church girl meeting because we need to sit down and talk about a few things guys because it's getting out of control i mean now that christian bbls have joined the conversations and godly women want to have bodies like strippers it's time we talk. I mean, we can laugh about it all we want, but it's better we talk about it since there are so many young women who have not been in the Lord for so long. So we're going to talk about what does the Bible say about plastic surgery? Here we go. So before we get into this video, quick commercial break. I don't know if you know, but your girl writes books i create christian content that helps you grow in your walk with god so i have a 28 day devotional called daughters of zion it is a really really amazing book 28 days of god's goodness where you can just like read about different women in the bible it comes with a daily scripture and a daily prayer and then i also have a prayer journal the church girls club 100 days prayer journal it is an amazing amazing uh journal to have where you just commit to praying for 100 days straight it comes with an introduction on how to use it and just really like can have a look into it as a daily scripture your daily prayer notes what you're grateful for who you want to pray for both these things are on available on amazon the link will be in the description box below make sure you purchase one or get a christmas gift for somebody or birthday gift and be blessed <laughs> All right, so let's get right into it. Of course, there is no literal Bible verse that says, thou shall not have nose jobs, thou shall not have BBLs. Like, you know, it's not in the Bible like that, but we still can know the heart of God as we read the word of God. Because as we read the word of God, we get to know the heart of the father for us, for his daughters, for what he considers beauty to be, for what he considers beauty standards to be. So for us to look to social media and to look to models and influencers to define or to set the tone of what beauty is, is completely wrong as Christian women, okay? We do not need a scripture that tells us do not have plastic surgery. We have the understanding of what God considers to be good and pleasing and perfect in his will. And plastic surgeries, let's see if they're part of that good and perfect will of God, okay? So I'm going to break it down from a biblical standpoint anyways. We see from the children of Israel that God always detested when they did anything that harmed themselves or others and their body. So we have in Leviticus where God says, do not make any cuts to your bodies. People would cut themselves for the dead. People would cut themselves for God, gods and idols. And God detested it. God hated it. God looked upon it with detest and hate so he hates it when we harm our bodies he hates it when we cut our bodies he said do not have any tattoo marks we shouldn't put tattoos on ourselves we know from scripture that our bodies are the temple of god so god never liked it when the children of israel cut their bodies when they hurt themselves when they harmed themselves 
So this is the first reference point that we have. We know from the children of Israel, God does not like when we harm our bodies and when we make cuts on our bodies, okay? But now there are two scenarios. The first scenario is that, God forbid, somebody has a terrible accident where something gets broken. And by the wisdom of God, God gives the doctors the insight, the wisdom, the solution to amend things that were broken, to help restore a broken nose, a broken skull, um, something that has been out of fo out formed or whatever that the doctors can then fix. That's the one scenario. So we are reading from Luke twenty two. 50 to 51 and it says and one of them struck the servant of the high priest cutting off his right ear but jesus answered no more of this and he touched the man's ear and healed him so here we see how jesus restored basically like a surgeon like the great physician that he is he restored the ear of the chief priest of the servant of the chief priest so god restored his ear instantly because god is a restorer so jesus comes to restore he he amends things that are broken so the lesson that we can learn from the scripture is if it ain't broke don't fix it jesus is a restorer jesus came to restore and he restored the ear of the chief priest's servant because it was broken and it needed restoration so if there's nothing wrong with your body, there is no need for restoration or for God to fix anything or for a surgeon, a doctor to fix anything. You see? So we can see that there's a difference between restoration and a difference between saying, oh, I feel like I would look better if my nose was smaller. So I think that I am going to do that and then uh, try to drag God into your will because when God made you, he didn't make any mistakes. We also know, according to the Bible, that we were made in the image and likeness of God. And when God looked at creation, when God looked at you and me, he said it is good. Good with nothing to add and nothing to take away. Good in the sense of this is what I like. This is to my likeness. It is disrespectful if we don't look at ourselves and as God as at God's creation and say, well, I think that God didn't do a good job here and he could have done a little bit better. So things and ideas of self-hate and things and ideas of low self-esteem are never from God, but they are from the enemy. And it is important that we understand that we as women have an enemy who is also after our beauty. The enemy hates that he we resemble God so much and he now has to look at a whole creation and a whole people that looks like the one that detested him so much it is a spirit of envy a spirit of rage that he comes against women and i am all for taking care of yourself i am all for beautifying yourself i am all for bringing the best out of you and putting on makeup and doing what makes you feel good working out so that your body is nice all of this i do 100 percent agree with and i do know is the will of god but anything that is self-harming anything that is a surgery because you want to look like a certain person or a certain image that is not the image of God is from the kingdom of darkness. It is from the pit of hell and you need deliverance. I am not one to tell you that beauty is not important. I believe that beauty is a tool. I believe that beauty is a weapon. We see it in the story of Esther. We see it, see it in the story of Sarah, that her beauty opened doors for her, that her beauty made her favored with people. So beauty is important. And God has given us beauty for ashes. The one who is after our beauty is the devil. If you want to restore and regain the beauty that God has given you and that the enemy has tried to steal from you, it is more of a spiritual matter than it is of a physical matter. It is something that you have to take in prayer. At the end of the day, there's nothing more beautiful than a woman that does not lie, a woman that does not gossip, a woman that does not deceive, a woman that does not evil. There's nothing more beautiful than that woman. And this is exactly what the Bible talks about when it says, let the beauty not just be outward. Like the face card not declining, king is a good thing, but it doesn't do anything for you much spiritually. The beauty that the Bible is talking about is the beauty, uh, incorruptible beauty, in incorruptible beauty of a quiet and a hidden spirit 
incorruptible. It means that it cannot be corrupted. The beauty that the world gives, the beauty of these beauty standards that the influencers and social media, the devil himself, the marine kingdom themselves fabricate and show to us and say, this is what you are supposed to look like. There's a corruptible beauty. It is a beauty that is corrupted. Growing up in school, I have been friends with the girls who have been considered the most beautiful girls in the school. And they had beauty but they did not have god and when i look at their lives today that beauty that so-called beauty that corruptible beauty that they carried was not able to give them a good future at the end of the day because when you are 11 and 12 and 13 and boys keep telling you you're so beautiful i want to be your boyfriend and um the beauty is luring you into a lifestyle that you cannot sustain the beauty will actually destroy you i have seen women die because of beauty i have seen women broken because of beauty i have seen women who have been thrown acid into their face because of beauty so beauty is vain when the bible says it it is true we like to quote it but we don't understand the vanity of the beauty that we're talking about when people tell you also oh, you're so beautiful say yeah by the grace of god because it is only the grace of god that sustains beauty if the beauty is corrupted if the beauty is of this world if the beauty is only an outward it has no meaning it has no value it will not last it will not do you anything good but the beauty that the bible is talking about is an incorruptible beauty the surgeries and the beauty industry is all influenced by the demonic by the kingdom of darkness it is all influenced by the, the devil and um I actually didn't even want the video to go into that direction because sometimes I think it's a little bit heavy for people who are not so familiar with spiritual things. But I'm just going to take it there because I think it will bless somebody. So um, what we need to understand is every time that blood is shed, when you go on an operation table and you decide to have a BBL, blood is involved. And the one who needs blood is the devil the one who needs blood and sacrifices is the enemy and these fallen angels and demons they are interested in body fluids they are interested in parts of your body that is why they condone these surgeries so much because they want to play nasty things and do nasty things with the things that you give to the surgeons and the doctors freely the implants that they're gonna put inside of you are demonic and evil and cancerous and uh, destructive for your body they are not gonna help you in any way so the enemy has made and formed devices has made and formed weapons against women that deceive them to think that oh this is a trusted doctor I'm gonna go lie on his surgery table and I'm gonna wake up and I'm going to look beautiful and they are deceived in a way that first of all this is not what the beauty this is not beauty this is not beauty that they're going to give you if you think that you had an issue with the way you looked before and the a doctor cutting you and taking things and adding things to you it will now make you feel beautiful you are deceiving yourself it is an inter internal issue it is a spiritual issue it is a issue of low self-esteem that's why we see when these women have these surgeries they will never after that feel like okay that's enough they never feel like they are enough because with every surgery with every cut with everything that they take from you and add to you that is not of god you are looking less like the image of god you are looking less like the woman that god has created you to be and so when you look into the mirror you are never able to see any kind of beauty when we look at the women who have botched their faces we say what was ever wrong with her so you see that they are completely deceived and blinded that there is a veil upon their face that they have an issue with the eyes when it comes to low self-esteem a woman that i love to uh, use as an example in the bible is leah the bible says rachel her sister was beautiful in form and appearance but leah had dull eyes and when it says dull eyes i always thought like what do they mean dull eyes it means that leah had a problem with how she perceived herself leah had an issue of seeing herself as the woman that god saw her her eyes could not see herself as beautiful so she was not perceived as beautiful to anybody else so she had a self-image problem and so many women of us have a self-image problem i have 
struggled with my self-image as a teenager and even growing up losing weight gaining weight i am somebody whose weight fluctuates so i have gained weight i've lost weight i've weighed over 100 kilos before i've weighed down to 50 kilos before so i have had my own share of self-esteem issues but by the grace of god god has delivered me from them and i've never felt the need to have any beauty beauty surgery because of something that i do not like about myself i'd rather take it up in prayer and say father open my eyes to see myself the way you see me open my eyes to perceive myself as the woman that you have created me to be and give me incorruptible beauty that is on the inside a spirit of beauty a spirit that is beautiful a quiet and a gentle spirit incorruptible that is the beauty that i desire and that i pray for not to find a quick fix with having surgeries that will eventually lead to death that will eventually lead me to hell. God created us beautiful, but these women will never see the beauty that God has placed on the inside of them because it's blurred out with every single surgery. So in conclusion, we see from the children of Israel from the beginning of time, God detests when we cut our bodies. God does not like blood to be shed for no reason. And Jesus healed the ear of the servant of the chief priest because it needed restoration. So surgery in order to restore something that was broken yes absolutely God has given the doctors the wisdom and the insight to make ways for things that are not supposed to be the way they are that can restore that can amend things that were broken because God is a restorer he's the God of restoration but then on the other hand the mindset of needing to feel more beautiful and having surgeries in order to look like a certain person or a certain way is deception and the work of the devil and it is from the kingdom of darkness and i pray that you seek deliverance from every low self-esteem issue that would even make you consider something like a christian bbl <laughs> um yeah so if you are watching this video because you were maybe contemplating on having a surgery, having plastic surgery and wanting to know what does God think about it, I am your sign. Don't do it. <laughs> it is outside of the will of God. If there is something that you have like because of some genetic defect, you have a sixth finger on a hand or not a another toe of course absolutely take advantage of the wisdom that god has given to the doctors and the surgeons and seek restoration in that way but everything else absolutely not sis so i'm so glad we had this conversation whenever i see anything else crazy going on on the internet i'll make sure to call you all for another women's meeting thank you all so much for tuning in do not forget to like comment and subscribe to this channel comment down below what you have learned from this video and what you think about plastic surgeries and christian bbls i'll catch you guys in the next one in another video also let me know what other topics you would like to me to talk about and if you have any further questions god bless you all i love you so much and see you soon bye bye